Hi, my friends. Today is Friday and it's only been two weeks since I filmed last. I think making my filming days Fridays really is the thing that's going to work. Anyway, I'm Suki, the Brown Eyed Stitcher, and I'm very happy to have you here hanging out with me today. It is September 22nd, which is Hobbit Day. So happy Hobbit Day, everybody. Uh, very happily, I even have a Lord of the Rings project to show. So, yay. And I will work on that today. Pretty certain. Like, that's the plan, is at some point today, I will work on it. Let's get there later. I have, I think, six out of my nine active projects to show you today. So that's pretty happy for me. I like that I touched so many of my projects over the last two weeks. I say so many of my projects. If you weren't here in my last video, I talked about how I paused a lot of my projects so I could work and get progress on these other projects that I have. And I have a number of categories that um, I that I choose from so that I have this variety of projects. And some of them will switch out like the ones for Withgo. So let's go. First, I'm going to show you my stamped kit. This is from Oraloa. They license their um, all their artwork. They also have diamond paintings, but I have no experience with their diamond paintings. This one is a phoenix. So pretty. It has a lot of colors in it. So I'm very, um, I'd say I'm very happy about how it's turning out, but truth is, um, it, it looks crazy. I mean, it looks it's, it's just because all my stitching is everywhere. Where even is my needle in this? <laughs> my needle is hanging here because uh, I didn't have scissors near me when I touched this last. Okay, so this, is this the right way? No, it's not. It's upside down. So this is where it it is. This is the only part that is any kind of filled in. The rest are just scattered around. I've still been working on the same purple color that I was working on last time. This piece really only gets, it gets like maybe five minutes a day um, because I, I I work on this when my daughter is reading aloud to me and that's it. Anyway, so yeah, my needle is literally just hanging right here uh, waiting for me to cut that off. I'm almost done this color. It is color number three. Um, Color number three out of this, isn't this gorgeous? Uh, the next color is a green color. It's all wrapped up. I don't really want to take it off. Here we go. Green color. There's not very much of that, so I don't anticipate that being a color I'm working on for very long. Aren't those colors? Look at that. Oh my gosh. Anyway. I do have a pair of scissors somewhere. Um, they have a case, like a, a little sheath, but I can't find them. I would like to put that in this bag. Um, but yeah, I'm not entirely sure where those are. So obviously I can't do that. The next project I will show you, I have not yet printed out a cover photo um, and 
that's okay. This is, um, it's my secret project, but the only one it's a secret from is the person who's the recipient. Um, so yes, <laughs> this is Fira. She was my, my boyfriend's sweet, sweet dog. I didn't know her very long, but she, um, went over the Rainbow Bridge and I got this as a custom chart from Luthien Art Shop. She's fantastic. A couple of you have, um, ordered from her since I first showed this and have started to work on it. Um, I've talked with people who are interested in also getting custom charts like this. So if you have a cat or a dog or, um, like I think that she would do other animals too. If you have like, um, I don't know, like a rabbit or a guinea pig or something like maybe reach out to her and see if that's something that she would do. But for sure, cats and dogs are kind of a specialty there. So this is on a 36 count um, even weave. It is hand dyed by me. It was the first piece I ever hand dyed. So down here, I started to frog this section. Obviously I didn't get very far, but um, it's very easy to frog. So I will eventually just work my whole way through all of that. But I have put in, um, I don't know how many, 5,000, 5,127 stitches in the last two weeks. We're at 36. 0.75% now, officially over one third of the way through. I really, really like working on this piece. It's so, so nice. As you can see, I finished the round around the border. It's very hard for me to show this now because I'm trying to show the whole thing. So I, I did this black all the way around. I actually stitched it down to here and then came back up here and stitched down. And then I came through and I did there's a second black line and I did the same thing there. And then this third one, which is almost done. <laughs> so this piece is the one that I've been taking for when my daughter is in dance class. She has dance night twice a week. And so... Um, there's significant time I have and I don't want to go home. So I, I go to the no, the nearby Barnes and Noble and I sit in their chair, which is not very comfortable because I have no armchair in this Barnes and Noble. That's fine, but it would be nice. Anyway, so I'm just sitting at one of those cafe chairs and it's fine. Um, and I listen to an audio book and I stitch. And I just stitch on black because that's the only color I keep in this bag is black. So while I'm there, I just stitch on black. When I'm stitching on this at home, I am doing um, some other colors. So I, no, I did this side. I did, I know I did that purple and this is too Look at that. These are two different um, green slash greenish yellow. Okay, so those are two different colors there. And uh, so this ear is surrounded. That was what I was trying to do there. And then I've got most of this ear done. I have a little bit right there. And then I will come up and fill in the colors around. Uh, and, and I'm sure by that point I will get have more of the black in like in through here so that I can get like that one in and stuff so oh so good so what I've been doing when I'm at home is doing one strand of black and then one strand of another color and then I go back and forth um I 
think I will continue to do that, but at some point I'm what the way I'm going to choose my color is by the largest stitch count to the smallest. Um, black is still the largest, but only by about 300. Um, so I think I'll still, I'll still be working obviously on black when I go to dance, but when I'm at home, I'll, I'll start switching to, this is the, uh, biggest color and stitch those down. Does that make sense? I think it makes sense. I do have two, there's two, um, color zeros, uh, this lighter blue and one of the colors in this, this part of the year. I can't remember which one, but one of those is a zero. Anyway, I really, really like working on this piece. I work on it in hand with the sewing method and I really like how I have been starting my threads on this. I've been trying something new since it's stitched one strand over two threads. Um, I really like how I've been starting my threads on this. It's just a very, very enjoyable stitch. Um, I usually am stitching it at the end of the day. And when I mean end of the day, I mean the very, very end of the day. I, if I remember, Suki, remember to talk about sleep. Anyway, there's that piece. All right, next is, this is my whip go piece from May. And uh, so it's, it's out right now. It's, a Jan Lin kit from like the 90s, 1993. It's called Victorian Christmas Bell Pull. And this is what it looks like. Um, it's a very shiny material, as you can tell, because you can see my ring light. So I have this top border and then these holly leaves done already. So what I'm working on for this whip go part is the boy and girl here, just that much. Not the rest of this scene, but just them. It is on cue snaps, and as you can see, it does not go all the way across, but this works out very, very well. I just have it up with, um, what are these called? The silicone cable ties. Uh, which is great because they double as needle minders also. Anyway, so this is where I've gotten to. Uh, the two jackets are finished. Their faces and hair and hats, those are also all done. It, obviously, except for the back stitching. Um, what's left is like their pants and skating shoes. And then there's like some um, half stitches for the like icy, icy feel. Uh, and then, yes, all the back stitching. Let me tell you about the back stitching here. Oh, but look at the colors for this. Look how, like, absolutely messy this is. Um, how can I do this in a way? You know what? Let me twirl it. Twirl. After I straighten it. If you guys like super straight threads, don't look here. But there we go. Um, there is a metallic in this piece, but what I was going to tell you, let me, let me tell you what the, here's the back stitching instructions in the top motif. So that's this section right here. You can look at it while I tell you the girl's hand, but not where it touches the coat sleeve. Hair and face outlines, but not where the hair touches the hats. Noses and mouths and outer lines of eyes. And then it gives me the color. Dark gold brown. Like, okay. 
do it here, but not this section. Do it here, but not this section. That's kind of, yeah. Um, this section has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven different colors of backstitch in it. And it's not, it's not that big. Seven different colors of backstitch. So that'll be fun when I do it. I don't mind backstitching, but that could be a challenge just in determining like the hand is, the hand is right there. Okay. Uh, so part of that gets stitched in one color and I believe the other part is a different color. So that'll be fun. <laughs> we'll see. I love this backstitching font, by the way. It's was so fun when I did that one. Um, there are words in here. It says, because the top says Christmas is for, and then it says sharing, laughing, and caring. Um, I may change the words. They include an entire alphabet because um, your it says the green family down here, so you can substitute that for you. Um, I probably won't do that part. I don't know yet, but I kind of want to switch out the three words, or at least some of them, but I'm not there yet, and I won't be for a while, um, because my whip go goal is to finish these people, and then this is going to go away and won't come back out until next year, at least. We'll see. It'll be, a, it's on pause. Um, kitty cat, what are you doing? I have one cat in my room right now. And she was like, oh, I like these fabric bags you placed on the floor. Let me sit on them. You want to come say hi? She does not wish to say hi, but I'm going to say hi. <laughs> this is Kara. She's a very sweet cat, uh, loves to sit and cozy when is allowed. She's the one that will sit in any box possible, no matter how small it is. My other cat doesn't do that so much, but Kara does a lot. She does not like traveling at all, and she doesn't like new places. She hides for weeks whenever I've moved with her. She is, both my cats are 15 years old now. Crunchy baby, crunch. It's crazy, they're 15. Oh, she started purring. I need to put you down now. My next project is um, my daily 30 piece. This is a Dimensions Gold Collection Kit. It's called Woodland Enchantress. And Ruth Sanderson is the artist. Um, it is a full coverage piece. And in the very typical dimensions, like half cross, full cross, different strands of for the half crosses. There's a piece of metallic thread right here. That must be from the Christmas the bell pull. All right, um, the colors, I have my floss for this one on um, Annie's Keepers that they're just numbered, the stickers, but um, that's these ones. I have a different, this one is where I keep the blends. So there's that. And then this one also has gold metallic, but it's not on. 
it's it's on a uh, thread drop but it's not attached to my things because I haven't used any of this yet and I don't want to I don't want to keep pulling it out all the time so I totally misspoke with how many days I had stitched on this last time um, this year it's more like 140 ish I was thinking it was higher than that it's not it's 140 ish um, so far this year so uh, I have been working down these folds of the dress there are three of them done now and they're beautiful look at that So I've got this fold and this fold, and this fold's kind of the bigger one, and and it comes down to here, and this fold really is, there's just like this little bit left to do. So one big fold and then a small one, and then if you see like there's a lot of navy blue right here, there's a section like just the edge of her outer skirt right here is, um, there's there's navy blue and then her, her dress. So you can see the border right there with the navy blue and the leaves. And then you've got like all of the, the dress here and then you've got a little bit of the border on this other side. So that's what I'm working on is and like her waist on down is what I've been doing right now in this side and then I will focus on this part. Well, I might come over here and do this one and then come in and do the skirt. I don't know which one I'm gonna do. I'm not there yet. Oh my gosh. It looks so good, guys. It's gonna take forever to, when I get to the back stitching, but yeah, this looks so, so good. Her hand is right here and her arm and then beneath that is um, her hair. So this is that outer top edge of the of the dress there. Oh it looks amazing. Yeah. So this is really just 30 minutes most. I won't can I say most days if it's like, I don't know how many days we are into this year, but we're for sure past 140 days, obviously. But in 140 days, most days I was around 30 minutes, sometimes a little bit more, but you can make a lot of progress by just having that consistency, which is so nice. Oh, I didn't think of where to put my... Okay, we'll do that. Over here. Next up. Just two more projects. This one is... Uh, Frodo and Galadriel by Matt Stewart. It's charted by Heaven and Earth Designs. On the website, this possibly is called The Gift. But you can see it says Frodo and Galadri. It's missing the L. I don't know. But here we are in um, the woods of Lothlorien with the Malorn trees. They're gorgeous. I love it. Okay, I only worked on this one day, but that's okay. I. Let me talk about this piece first. Um, the last two projects are just kit fabrics, by the way. That's I don't usually say what they are because it's just whatever came in the kit. This is on a 25 count Lugana. And as you can see, I put them on my scroll frames. It fits perfectly. Look at that. It's so nice. Um, and... It, it's all accessible. So my goal right now is to stitch in all of these parked threads. 
um, these ones that are hanging, not these ones that are wrapped up. Look how little that is. It's, it's legally side by side. It's just a little loose right now, but that's okay. Um, so I worked in through here, like stitching down throughout this section, wherever, wherever the thread took me. Uh, halfway point is like here. So as you can see, halfway point is somewhere, somewhere around there. So I, um, have a, uh, okay. I put, I ended up putting this on scroll rods, which is really helpful to be able to work on it. Okay. Um, there we go. I made it so it's not wiggly side by side. Okay. Get my words out, Suki. I, uh, um, intro uh, introduced myself. What is it? I barged into Alara's challenge for next year. So she has a challenge with, um, Jen, the caffeinated crafter for next year where they will put in 25,000 stitches into uh, one single project of their choice. And um, if they, they have like this reward system, right? And I, I said, I'll join you guys on my bookshelf. Well, 25,000 on my bookshelf is like, I'm going to do that within two months. Like that's not even a real challenge. Right. Um, so I was talking to Alara and I'm going to, my challenge with her will be in the second half of the year. So starting in like maybe July ish, she's going to work through her challenge with Jen first. And when she finishes that, then the challenge with me starts. So it's going to be 25,000. My project of choice is Frodo and Galadriel because it needs love. And yeah, we didn't talk about like the reward part, but we'll probably do the same thing she and Jen are going to do. Well, I don't know. We haven't talked about that. I think both of us will just be super happy with like ha having the goal met. So this actually has exactly 20,000 stitches right now. It's at 6.57% and I would really like to see this at 7% before it's birthday it's seventh birthday guys it's almost seven years old this piece so i'd like to see it at seven percent by then which is mid-november november 16th uh, so i will work my way to that endeavor yeah is there anything else I need to say about this? Oh, I will be working on it today because it is, um, ha I was about to say Gandalf and that's not right. Bilbo, Bilbo and Frodo's birthday is September 22nd. And so it's like Hobbit day and you can celebrate. I'm going to celebrate by this stitching on this at some point after I finish my bookshelf. Um, yes. Because that one went on scroll frames, I actually ended up putting it into this project bag. It was in my large, um, bag from Alara, but I... All that's in here is literally the cover photo and my note card 
there's no threads in here whatsoever. Um, and the fabric is on the school rods. And in the large one went another active project, um, Queen of the Night, which is on a Q-snap now. So. I'm not even, I didn't work on that one, so I'm not showing you. This is my last project to show you today. It is my bookshelf. Treasure Hunt Bookshelf, super size max color version. Artwork by Amy Stewart, and it's charted by Heaven and Earth Design. I am on the third shelf and on track to finish it November 7th, 2023. And then after my stitching in the Springs Retreat, in which is in Ohio, in November, I will work on the fourth shelf and get it 100% finished on uh, October 31st, 2024. I've, I've had some ideas on how I want to stitch through this last shelf. I have a couple different ideas but there's one in particular I think I'm going to go with. So that's going to be, that'll be fun. Could also be challenging. And I might decide to change it as I go. But I, I think I know how I want to stitch this, this fourth shelf. But we're not there at the fourth shelf. We're still on the third shelf. This is on um, 28 count easy count fabric. And I, oh, yeah, I've put in like 11,000 stitches in the last two weeks. 11,057 stitches. So we are at 530,000 stitches, 349, um, at 73.43% complete. I finished this section and, uh, <laughs> okay, so I'm going to tell you how I went about stitching this section. Nobody guessed right, which to be fair, it is confusing because I did color complete before some colors, as you can see here. Um, I'm actually approaching this section the same way So, as I did this section. So what I did was I decided to work, the, work it from the outside and then work in. So I started in over here and I went across and I just I picked the colors how I always do like the first color uh, because I don't like leaving ninja stitches to find later on so I just picked like the first color and then in that 10 by 10 row I worked wait I picked my color from the 10 by 10 row across the top but then I stitched it cross country wherever it went. And if and if I ran out there, well, I could just jump around and finish out that thread wherever I could in this section. Uh, so I went across and then down, and then I came back here and went down and then across just because that was easier. And then I just kept doing it across and down and then down and across. And it slowly went in and this was the last part to finish up right right in here that was so fun because I could see all of it being getting filled in but seeing a part of it like really be solid so I'm doing the same thing here as I worked my way across and then I worked all the way down so I got that bottom corner of the shelf and now I am over here and I'm working my way down again No, 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 no. That's not what I'm doing. I have to go across here. Yes, that's what I'm doing. I am working my way. Wait. Y yes. I am like very, very confused on what I'm doing. I need to work my way across this shelf. Ah. 
I'm looking at this backwards and I think that's why I'm confused. I went, I started here, I went across and then down. Oh yes, and so now I need to go down and across. So I must be down, coming down, and then I will go across the shelf this way. That's what I'm doing, yeah. Um, how are you gonna know what I'm doing if I can't even figure it out? So like I said, I will, I pick that color and I stitch it wherever it makes sense to stitch it. And then if I run out, of stitches but I still have thread then I look and see if I can put it anywhere else and so sometimes I'm getting some of those ninja stitches in now by doing that which is very very nice so yeah I'm just gonna keep moving along this is um, two strands of thread tent stitch uh, mostly basket weave I try to do basket weave tent wherever possible. Very, very lovely indeed. And okay, that's all my projects. So I've got one more thing to show you and I've got things to talk about. Um, this is appropriate being part of um, What's it called? Hobby day, hobby day. Oh my gosh. Okay. So cunning cross stitch. Um, there is a website and a Facebook group. Um, I will put the link to his website um, in the description box so that you can see this pattern. But what he does, um, Stuart Cunningham, he's, he does stitch your own adventures. The last one was Harry Potter. Um, this one he just started. It's Hobbit tea themed. And it is so fun. I'm not going to start this soon, but Kaylin and I have started discussing options. Like, but there's a lot of options and we're just in the first part. There's, I think, four parts, but four? I don't know, but we're talking, we're talking options. Um, I'm not going to show you all of these because you can go and visit. Okay. Maybe I will show you all of these. Um, because you can, it's a free pattern. Um, but definitely go to his website. If you are at all interested in this, I am excited with how many options that there are. Um, you can personalize it so much. For example, here's, here's door options. There's six options. And, uh, if you like a style, but not the color, then change the colors, right? So, um, we have, if you want to stitch a porch, you've got porch options. I'm having trouble turning. This is your middle section of your hobbit hole. So this is this is where the door is. I'm sorry, the my school friends are moving moving things. Um, so you've got that. It's very important to read the instructions and follow them because if you stitch this but you wanted a porch, then you, like you need to you need to do the porch first and then this part right because yeah this is like one side of it and you can choose different chimney options i like how you've got two short ones like they're totally in the back you've got three that are like in the front and then this one it's in the front but then there's grass because it's like it, it it it's it goes up and then the grass comes anyway i like i like this as options um this is the right section so the door the door would be on this side of the of this place and I'll, these are all windows which we'll get to right now you've got window options 
Um, if you wanted to stitch one of these, again, you have to account for it in your pattern. So, um, and, and yeah, you can customize all the colors. I've seen some people like fill these in like a stained glass. So y'all, you got options. This is the left side. So the door is over here. And then you've got tree options, decorated for a party and not decorated for a party. I think, I think Kaylin wants this one or this one. And then, and then on the far right side of the pattern, you can choose a border. And I, I think I like this one best. So this is like where the chimney is right here. So, so many options. And this is just like the top part of the, of the whole pattern. Um, yeah. So excited about that. But again, I, I'm, not, I'm not starting anything right now. I have this huge desire to start a Carolyn Manning chart. Um, but y'all, I went through her website and ended up with like 88 patterns on my wish list from her. I did go through and now I am down to 79, but still 79 is a lot. Anyway, um... <laughs> I also joined her Facebook group and downloaded all the freebies that she has there. I don't know why, like it's just so strong right now that I want to start very specifically a Carolyn Manning. Um, but I really would rather not start something so I'm just working. I'm just continuing on with all my other things. Um, I was invited to a local stitching meetup a couple weeks ago. It was like the day after my last video, I guess. It was fun. We met at a local coffee shop that I've never been to and I got a delicious drink. It was like it included pumpkin pie spice, but like vanilla also. So it was tempered, I guess. Uh, it was very good. I am absolutely one of those pumpkin, pumpkin pie girls. Um, my favorite pie growing up was pumpkin pie. Um, now I have two favorites. It's pumpkin pie and strawberry rhubarb pie. Uh, those are my two favorite pies. And anyway, so I love this season. I am like sitting here cleaning off my slippers while I'm talking to you. Why? I don't know. Um, it's like one of those things where I'm just like, oh, distracted. Anyway, it's not like I like pumpkin spice in everything, but I sure do like it. We have currently right now, we've got pumpkin eggnog. And I'm really excited for eggnog season. Like, definitely a great thing in, in the winter months. And we have a pumpkin roll, which is delicious. And Starbucks has been having, like, a buy one, get one free on their fall drinks every Thursday afternoon this month. So um, that's been absolutely delicious. Uh-huh. I've tried a lot of them, but my favorite, I like the pumpkin spice latte and the um, ice. It's the chai tea latte pumpkin one because I do really like their chai tea latte. It's good. Anyway. So, um, we also discovered that putting in like a pump of like the mocha sauce gives it almost like a pumpkin chocolate bread, um, flavor. 
but we didn't like too many pumps of, of mocha, so we just wanted a little bit of it. I do sub out for almond milk, and I do better with that than regular milk, so that's been going on. Um, I love, yeah, I lean into pumpkin spice hard. <laughs> Um, let's see. What else do I have to say? Oh, sleep. I was going to talk about sleep. So I'm doing like this. Um, oh, 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 oh. Cross it. Look at this. I hung stuff. I feel so proud of myself. I don't think I had this done by my last video, did I? But I've got Nomi's here. And uh, Nomi's is a chart from Kaylee Pentstitch. Her website is the sewingshop.ca. Um, I did modify it slightly, and I have a modification also. Anyway, there's some modifications in here. And this is a unicorn chart. I received this when I turned eight years old, and I did not stitch it until, what did the, I think the date said 24. 16 on it. It is a Bucilla kit called Once Upon a Time. And oh, and this, this butterfly is a little diamond art, like keychain thing, um, diamond painting. Kaylin did it in some activity somewhere. I don't know, but she came and gave it to me and I, it got hung up there. And then over across my room, I think I talked about how I have bookshelves over there and um, it's got stuff on them now. They're not finished, but I hung up, um, I hung up things over there and I like it. And then I put my yarn over there. My bed is between it and me, but it's there. I really like it. My diamond painting things are there. Um, uh, my Conqueror Challenge medals are there. So, yeah. I will show you guys eventually, but not yet. If you do want to see them and you can, and you're on Instagram, um, go to my feed. They're there somewhere. I, I showed some pictures on Instagram. Maybe not of my yarn. That's on Discord. Discord's also a great place if you want to see things. Um, I got my hair colored yesterday. I love freshly purpled hair. It is my favorite. She had to trim off about three inches. Um, this is like my go-to. I go into her about twice a year, maybe three times, but usually just twice. And, um, and that's why she had to cut off so much is because just like, the damage had, had crept up the ends too far for anything else. So that's okay. I, we go purple and then we go long and she did, um, this might be my favorite and her favorite way of how she did. Um, like she lightened my hair, but only like the top part and not very much. Um, we didn't let it sit for very long or anything. And she also made it kind of, it's hard to see, but it's, it doesn't go all the way to my roots. So you see a lot of like natural hair color in here and it's, it's, um, kind of more streaky. So as it grows out and fades out, it's going to look real nice. There's not, there's no like line that's going to show up, um, which is real nice. So. I like how it fades out, but I love my freshly purpled hair. I love it so much. I keep, okay, sleep, sleep, sleep. I have been sleeping better, okay? So my sleep for years and years have been difficulty. I learned that there was a term, um, there was a type of insomnia where you wake up during the night and then can't fall back asleep or it takes you a very like a couple hours before you can um I experienced that for many many years um over the last like four or five months my sleep has improved um to where I don't 
have those kind of wake up periods very often anymore. Um, but I'm, I was still struggling a lot with feeling very rested. Um, so I just read a book called The Sleep Solution by um, Dr. Win Winters, I think, um, is his name, W. Chris Winters. Uh, it's it's a very highly recommended book on sleep. I see it I see it re recommended everywhere. Anyway, so I finally I finally read it and I came across a protocol in his insomnia section. Uh, by the way, I I am going to recommend this book for anyone um, struggling with their sleep. It might. There's some different mindsets in there, um, as well as like maybe some helpful tips and things, something that you hadn't considered trying beforehand. And that was, is this, is this one thing? There is a protocol for insomnia. Um, it's called, it, it is a Cognitive Behavior Therapy Protocol for Insomnia, so CBT-I. Um, and I hadn't heard of this before, and it's basically, some people call it sleep restriction, but it's, it's more like bed restriction. So you want your sleep efficiency to be like 85% or higher, which means 85% of the time that you are in bed, you should be asleep. Um, so the, the best thing that you can do for your sleep is to have a consistent wake up time. I had been waking up at seven consistently for a while, um, but ultimately I really wanted six to be my wake up time. So I went ahead and I just, I, I set it at six and then I worked my way back and I decided, um, what that meant for when I went to sleep. Okay. Um, I have been doing like a bit of trial and error on this and I'm only like five days in, but it's been really good. So, um, yeah, it's been, it's been really, really good. I'm, I'm, I'm about at six hours of sleep right now. And right now what I'm trying to do is I'm finding the place where my sleep efficiency is still really high, but I can find out where, um, see, this is like when I wake up and this is when I go to sleep. That's what my hands are doing right now, guys. I'm trying to find that point where my sleep efficiency stays high, but I'm also like awake and alert and feel really good during the day. Like, where is that point? How many hours of sleep do I need essentially? Um, so I'm, I'm, I'm playing around with six hours right now. Um, and I'm going to let that sit for a little bit, but I think I'm going to probably within a few days, move it up 15 or 30 minutes so that I'm looking at six and a half hours in bed and then up to seven. I'm really hoping that I land around seven hours, but I will continue going up if I need to. So um, it does mean I'm tired during the day, but I already was tired during the day, so that's fine. So what's been amazing though, is that I also am very active now. Um, I, more active than I was anyway. I get up at six and I, get out of bed within a minute of my alarm going off. Like I don't allow myself anything else. And then I get ready and I go to the gym and I walk on a treadmill. I'm not, my aim with that is to get moving right away. Um, so I'm there by by 6.30. I'm, I'm getting up and like changing and letting out a dog to go to the bathroom. like. And then like driving to the gym. So 
I get there around 6.30 and I walk for like 30 to 40 minutes-ish. I don't know. I'm just kind of, my goal is to get myself there and get myself moving. And um, I've been reading on my e-reader while I've been at it, <laughs> which my daughter finds like, she's, she's like, that's a crazy skill and focus that you must have to do that. <laughs> so I'm like, you're just, I'm just walking. It's not like I'm going fast or anything anyway um so that's what i'm doing and the great thing is is that i've been sleeping i am sleeping slightly less than what i was before um but I, uh, my research, not just from reading this book, but additional research has given me really good guidance on what to look for and how to approach this so that I can personalize it for me um, and what I'm aiming for. So I'm, I'm fine. I'm sleeping a little bit less, but more active, but my quality is great. Like it's been good. My, um, my ring, this is a tracker it's telling me that my sleep is efficient but short <laughs> and i agree with it it is efficient now but it's short so i'm working on that and i'm really happy with how that's that's been going so um if you do have struggles with sleep um maybe give that book a read i checked it out through my library on my e-reader and read it that way um and yeah, there's that. I I liked his writing style, but I can see why some people wouldn't like his writing style. He's he was very friendly and approachable for me, but some people don't like that in their experts. They prefer their experts to sound experty. Okay, just because I feel like sleep is going like better and I do have more energy <laughs> and um, I've gotten a lot of things done, that doesn't mean that I have words. So because of that, I'm staying up quite late at night and that's where I've been getting a lot of the stitching in um, is I stitch, but then the last like 30 to 60 minutes of the whole day is reading. This light will, this light right there is, see when I, I need to point to it back here, but that looks weird to you guys. Anyway, here, this light has a like color bulb in it, um, like a color changing bulb. So it's set to red right now. So the last like 30 to 60 minutes before I go to sleep, I have that light on and am reading to, yeah. And then, bef but before I get to that point, I'm stitching. Um, that was lengthy. Was that, what else? What, what else can I tell you guys? Um, I didn't write down anything else. I feel great. I've been doing a little bit of decluttering. I am busy setting up. I'm busy with many things. Dance classes have started for Kaylin. She's taking five classes this year, which is one more than last year. Um, she is in hip hop, ballet, pre-point, lyrical, and the new one is jazz. It's being taught by her lyrical teacher who she loves. So there's that. My dance classes don't start until November, so we've got some time. Um, I accompany a chorale group and they started up on Sunday. So we had our first practice. That was fun. Um, so that means that I also need to get back to practicing piano. So that's been that's been happening is, is, um, 30 to 60 minutes a day of, of practicing piano. <sighs> what else? 
I feel like there was something else about like life and stuff. Um, what's upcoming? I'm going back to New Hampshire next weekend to see my boyfriend. And in October is the Stitch West Retreat that's in Salt Lake City, Utah. And then I come home from that and like two days later, I'm driving to New Jersey so that Kaylin and I can attend a concert for the K-pop group and Hypen. And then I come home from that and it's 24 hours of cross stitch weekend. So that's going to be a super busy time. And then somehow I found myself agreeing to a week of Halloween movies. So like seven days of Halloween movies. I don't know how this is going to go, but Kaylin is excited for it. And um, Steven, my boyfriend, he also really likes Halloween and he is aware of how I do with movies. So um, I don't know what movies will end up, but I feel like this is going to be okay. Um, we're not going to push my boundaries too much with this, but um, we're going to do something. And then in November, the second weekend is Stitching in the Springs. Between these two retreats, I'm very excited for how many of you I haven't met yet that I will get to meet at those places. So it's going to be, it's going to be fun. I'm excited. I'm really, I'm really excited. And yeah, it, that's, that's life that's upcoming. I'm just going to keep like stitching on these projects. I've got, I'm pretty certain I have nine right now. I showed you six, right? And then I have three more up there. That's nine. Um, and the only thing that'll change out is when I meet that goal for Victorian Christmas Bell Pole, I will switch it out for the WIPCO calls for June. And those will then get switched out for July. And so, yes, that's that's my plan. Um, so I'm going to sign off now. Because I cannot think of anything else that... Um, I didn't, I didn't get questions, I don't think. No, that's not true. I should have talked about questions in the beginning of the video like I did last time. Um, I had a question from somebody about um, how to work with confetti and ninja stitches and, and having trouble with their needle and wanting to keep like not as nice of a back as possible, I guess. Um, the thing is, I don't, I don't really care about the backs of my work, but I'll show you, I'll show you Treasure Hunt Bookshelf. Um, it looks like this. It looks a bit abstract, for sure. Um, the confetti spaces have a lot of threads starting and stopping. Absolutely. Um, they're going to be like thicker, um, like, like these leaves. Okay. They're just going to be thicker because you have, you're starting and stopping a lot of things in that small space. If that bothers you, because that, the way that I start and stop on this piece means I'm burying my thread. That can cause uneven tension in the in your stitches on the front of your work. Um, so the way around that would be to do like waist threads to start and stop. So then when you're stitching, you're stitching over those threads initially rather than coming behind later and messing up that tension. So um, 
I think that would keep your back a little bit nicer potentially, but it is a much more meticulous way because of, of you're almost going stitch by stitch as well. Um, and doing things like that. So not necessarily, you can probably, anyway, it's harder to do with cross country. And I personally am not a huge fan of waste aways unless I did it in a very organized way. <laughs> like, but my whole piece would have to be pretty meticulous in terms of like how I worked on it. And I don't think I would want to do that for very long. So, um, if that did not make sense, let me know and um, I can make a video eventually on it. Um, that was That's the only question I can really remember. Uh, a couple people uh, said that the couching explanation was good, but would really like to see um, a tutorial on that. So um, I haven't touched Sorceress in the last two weeks, obviously, or else you would have seen him. So haven't done that yet. I can't think of any other questions since my last video. So, but I'm sorry if, if you did ask a question, I have responded to it. I can say that. Um, much love to you guys. Thank you for hanging out and I wish you all the best. Take care.